Good morning. My name is Carol Thomas, and I am from the Monarch Manor neighborhood at the site of the historic municipal stadium. I am here on behalf of my neighbors to say thank you very much for your support of our neighborhood. And as well, I would like to uh, express my um, understanding of what should be priorities in our budget process. First of all, I'm sure all the citizens of the city are concerned about the murder and crime rate, and I would like to express that we have plenty of uh, security uh, from the police uh, of our neighborhoods. The other is with regard to our um, vacant buildings and properties. Please don't cut that budget. We really need to keep that service going. Thank you very much. I'm Leslie Scott. I'm spending this year as a Digital Inclusion Fellow, and recently our mayor focused on this important issue at Tech Week that just took place here in Kansas City. And my priority is to make sure that not only do we keep having a Chief Innovation Officer, but that we add a person working in the city in Digital Inclusion. And that, to me, speaks to our urban redevelopment area, and I think that's very important for our city. My name is Mary Mittenfellner, and I live in the 3rd District. I actually represent my neighbors, my, my district, because we are under siege. Our police budget has been cut. We have to have our officers back, and we also have to have these vacant houses down. We've got to have this neighborhood cleaned up. That's where the bad guys hide. And uh, but I appreciate everything the city does for us, but I'm kind of losing hope. Thank you. Hi, my name is Gerard Grimaldi. I live in South Kansas City in the 6th District, and I'm here representing my neighbors and also Truman Medical Centers. Top priority for a healthy community is a strong health care safety net that provides essential care, both for those who may not be in the best of health, but also in terms of the prevention care that Truman Medical Centers, Children's Mercy Hospitals, and all the safety net agencies do. In addition, a strong health care infrastructure is necessary to work closely with our first responders. My name is David Johnson. I live in the Crossroads and I'm also president of the Crossroads Community Association. And my personal goal and hope for the council as they work on a new budget is to prioritize transportation and infrastructure spending. Uh, we're a very large city. We have a lot of infrastructure for a small amount of people and we need to make sure we're maintaining that for the next generation. My name is Gwen Davis and I'm the president of the Seven Oaks Neighborhood Association. And I'm here today in the budget workshop and um, I think uh, looking over the budget, I think we need to prioritize safety. And I'm looking that they have um, four more money for um, the, the development, for less money for development. And I think if we have more development in our communities, this will help cut down crime. Um, so I would like to see a better adjustment of some of the budget money so that it would be more uh, things implemented in our communities to keep our neighbors safe. Hello, my name is Takesha Ford. I live within the Wendell Phillips neighborhood area that's located within the third district. And I believe one of the most prioritized investments should be within our third district youth, uh, their education. We have so many homeless youth that are sleeping within the parks, not getting education, and falling by the wayside. So I think if we develop more recreational things for them to do, <coughs> uh, most importantly, invest in their education, uh, whether you're giving them free workshops within communities, open up more <coughs> community centers, things of that relevancy will uh, invest in long-term successful youth in the state of Missouri. I'm Greg Lombardi with Legal Aid of Western Missouri. I believe that the city should be investing in the future, and a lot of that is working on urban core issues, dealing with abandoned properties, vacant properties, and giving economic development opportunities in the urban core, and uh, developing the youth of the urban core. Mayor James made the point that if you, uh, you got to take away money to fund something, if you're not funding these urban core issues, you are taking away money from the future of Kansas City and Kansas City's development. Thank you. I'm Eva Schulte with Communities Creating Opportunity, and this was a great process on community participatory budgeting, and um, we know that budgets are moral documents. We need to make sure that we are prioritizing economic development and uh, neighborhood services and ensuring that 
treatment is a priority instead of incarceration. And as CCO and myself as a resident and 11 year uh, proud member of Kansas City, we know we can do it. Uh, my name is Seft Hunter, representing Communities Creating Opportunity, a nonprofit organization here in Kansas City. Uh, we just went through listing our priorities, and my top four priorities are strengthening communities, ensuring that we have uh, strong and safe communities, ensuring that the infrastructure, so sidewalks, uh, streets, and bridges within communities are, are in great repair, um, health, and also transportation. Okay, so my name is Brian Stalder. I'm from the Indian Mound Neighborhood Association, and I think that uh, crime prevention and crime intervention um, is our top priority because we can uh, spend a lot of money uh, bringing people to the city and letting them know how cool Kansas City is, but if people don't feel safe here or if we get a bad reputation for crime, uh, people aren't going to want to stay. And, uh, and I really think that, uh, you know, the police department, they can do a lot in reacting to the crime, but um, I think that if we spend more time um, uh, identifying kids at risk youth and uh, giving them positive activities and keeping them on track uh, that we can do a, a lot better keeping kids out of jail, fighting the prison industrial complex and uh, just making sure that uh, uh, the kids in our community have a safe and uh, productive place to grow up and provide opportunities for them. Hello, my name is Karen Dolt. I am CEO of Northland Healthcare Access. I am part of the safety net clinic structure that, we, that receives health levy dollars. It is a priority in our community that these services be at, left at the level they are or given a, additional funding. We live in a state that unfortunately hasn't seen the, as a priority to um, expand Medicaid, leaving those citizens that are uninsured in our community very vulnerable. Those are the folks that you walk through the grocery store with that serve you, you your food. And it's essential that those folks uh, are served with quality and quantity of health care. Health care is not a privilege. Health care is a right. I'm Beth Lowe Smith. I am a 15-year resident of Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm also the vice president of the policy work at KC Healthy Kids. And um, my number one priority for city spending is um, for our city to invest in improvements to access to healthy food, uh, healthy fresh food retail in particular, and safe places to walk and play. And that's my priority because um, I, I believe that when our, our communities, our neighborhoods support healthy habits, we are less likely to suffer from obesity, uh, which is linked to type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and poor mental health. And I believe that thriving communities offer people um, the opportunity for healthy food wherever they are throughout their day, as well as um, great jobs and safe places to be out and about within their community and be physically active. Um, I think grocery stores and good sidewalks and safe streets and safe trails, I think those are the things that draw people into a community, that build a community, and that make it a place that everyone wants to live. Now give me your name. Manny Abarca. Uh, my top priorities um, relate a lot when it comes to the actual neighborhoods themselves, whether it be the parks. Uh, commission and making sure that our parks are fully funded and that there are resources there for the neighbors to use within the community um, as well as emergency response in terms of having um, KCPD on the ground, uh, more officers in our community, a better response for our 911 services. Hi, I'm Teresa Owens. And hi, I'm Nina Whiteside McCord, and we're here representing Maryland Ridge, and we are new for KC. We're located off of 66th and Truce between Paseo. And our interest here today that we would like to tell the city is about abandoned housings. We have a great need for more uh, codes inspectors. We need to probably look at the old rules that they have in place and see can we restructure them if we can't afford to have new people. Maybe we need to look at the way that we're doing things and selling these houses through land bank. I'm Victor Wynn Sr. for Victory in Christ Home Ownership Program Endeavors. It's uh, an improvement program for uh, abandoned homes of up improving and making homeowners out of people that are not normally 
able to qualify for loans or, or even grants. Hi, I am Melba Taylor of Victory in Christ Home Ownership Program Endeavors, and for short, we call it Big Hope. And of course, our priority is neighborhood preservation and revitalization for the inner city. We are, our unique approach is that we're going to have people become homeowners within five years, and it is targeting the low to moderate income families. And so, yes, we need the money, you know, for that, and we need those abandoned houses. Hi, my name is Tom Bibbs. I represent the Palestine Neighborhood Development Corporation. We believe a priority should be neighborhood and housing, services to the neighborhood and to the people who live in these neighborhoods. They raise and support a tax base, which goes to the city for money, and this is where our priorities lie. I'm Sandy Sexton, representing Ruskin Heights Homes Association, which consists of 1,800 homes in South Kansas City. One of my priorities would be basic services, such as the bulky and leaf pickup, um, and also trash services. Also, in addition, mowing vacant lots, we have an abundance of them. We've noticed that uh, as of 1st of July, the, uh, when, they pro, when they suspended the, the bulky pickup for that month, it caused us to be months behind. And so now when we have people who are wanting to get bulky pickup, they have to be scheduled almost three months in advance, which is not suitable. And it also brings on illegal dumping from other sources that see trash in the, in the uh, property, and so they just add to it. And that has become a real blighted situation here in Ruskin Heights. My name is Edgar J. Lindsay. I'm the president of the White Oaks West Neighborhood Association. My major concern and my neighbors and the members of my organization's major concern is infrastructure which is deals with the infrastructure in, within our area. We have a, a drainage ditch that runs between 88th Terrace and 89th Street on Lane Avenue that is falling apart. The neighbor, neighborhood's properties, the property owner's land is sliding down into that ditch. We think it to be a health and safety area because we're always chasing children out of that ditch, and we figure, we feel that it's going to be a it's going to be a potential problem there, and we would like to see the city. We've asked this for several years uh, to get the city to do something about this. So far, all we've received in, is yellow tape over one small area. So we're in dire need of getting that drainage ditch processed, getting funding for it and getting it done immediately, not after some child has gotten hurt or drowned in that particular ditch. We'd like to get this done immediately. It is of highest of concern in my neighborhood. My name is Katie Greer and I want Kansas City, Missouri to invest in protected bike lanes. That means sidewalk, curb, buffered bike lane, parked cars, and then traffic. All it takes is paint, and plastic reflective balusters. It doesn't require a ton of infrastructure. It doesn't require a ton of startup cash. It makes pedestrians happy because they're further from the traffic. It makes bikers happy because they actually have a place to ride their bike. And it makes cars happier and motorists happier because they don't have to ride with those bikers. Everyone's happy. My name's Tracy G. Lewis, and I would like Kansas City to be improved by cleaning up all the abandoned houses picking up all the oversized bulky items off the streets and just making our city more beautiful and making more activities for our youth after hours. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Catherine Green and I'm a member of the Kansas City Bungalow Club and a supporter of the Kansas City Historic Society. And so I'd like to say something about historic preservation in Kansas City. Um, I appreciate the work that you all do and I thank you for your time and your commitment. And I understand that you know a lot more about many things than I. But our buildings are, we have many iconic buildings in Kansas City that are well built and that with a little work will be in our future for many years. And I think it would be a shame to replace them with something that is not so well built and will probably not last so long. So please keep historic Kansas City and historic 
preservation on your mind as you're thinking about our future. Thank you. My name is Matthew Plummer, and I am the general manager of Fairwood and Fairlane Homes Association in South Kansas City. Fairwood is located on uh, James Day Reed and Bannister, and Fairlane is on Bannister and Blue Ridge Boulevard. I saw on the news today in Overland Park not picking up uh, their bulky items, and I just want to thank the city and the city council to turn around and that the services that Kansas City provides, and I want to take the time to say that. With that being said, I'd like to also thank our Councilwoman Alicia Kennedy for neighborhood preservations. And I think that's absolutely critical going forward for our homes associations to continue that to work together. I think instead of being apart, and I think neighborhood preservations is a wonderful program that we can work combined together to not only make our community safer, but the individual neighborhoods and those homes associations. My name is Matthew Plummer, and thank you for your consideration. Hello, I'm Norma Dell Smith I'm from the East Meyer area of Kansas City. I'm just here to please, ask you to please fund the 911 call center and the police department, and the, which means they need more vehicles too. They're very understaffed and it's a safety uh, problem for citizens all over Kansas City. So it's not just here, but the entire city needs your help on funding these departments, please. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brenda Thomas, and I'm president of the Marlboro Community Coalition. And I'm here with this budget exercise today, and it's, it's marvelous. Um, I would like for the city council to understand the priorities of the Marlboro area. Uh, in the budget process, what we want really is more funding for everything neighborhood, everything, particularly as it goes with codes enforcement, solid waste, and uh, anything else that has to do with keeping the neighborhoods clean. Uh, we appreciate everything that you guys do, but that is our biggest and our most utmost priority. Thank you. Well, I'm Troy Schulte, City Manager for Kansas City, Missouri, and on behalf of the city, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedules to participate in our citizen budget workshops. These processes, these, your ideas, your suggestions, your willingness to go on camera and tell us how we can make this city better are vitally important as we build the city of tomorrow. So on behalf of the city of Kansas City, thank you. We're, we look forward to your, your efforts in the future and can't thank you enough for the work you provided for us today. Thank you.